The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to the Pit Life Barbecue Podcast. Join us around the pit as we talk all things barbecue. Now here is your host, Johnny Mag. What's up, everybody? Coming to you live from the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe in Seattle, New Hampshire. It's a welcome back to another episode of the Pit Life Barbecue Podcast. I'm Johnny Mags. What is happening, Chrissy? Hi, Johnny. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Oh, I'm just great. Yeah. I'm excited. Got my brother on today. I know. One of my many brothers, I, I have to say. say. I, I, I've grown to a big family now. Well, yes, the brother, the uh, barbecue brotherhood is quite large. That it is, for sure, for sure. Already got my t- text from Daddy Dutch telling me don't be late. Yeah, yeah. So, let's get the show up. There's Chapin and Daddy Dutch. Jason, what's up, boys? Well, <clears throat> let's get right down to it. Today's episode is brought to you by Uncle Steve Shake. You ever have a ever wonder why your neighbor has a line trying to get into their backyard when they have a barbecue, but nobody's coming to yours? It's for one reason and one reason only, Chrissy. Because they're using Uncle Steve Shake and you're not, you noob. Absolutely. Uncle Steve Shake uses some of the finest ingredients on all his lines, the competition line. Dessert shake, mm-hmm. gator shake, my favorite. Also, also, Uncle Steve has incredible customer service. If you have any question whatsoever, uh, he'll answer the phone. He yeah. is customer service. Yeah. Customer service, HR, the whole nine. And also check out his Facebook page, Uncle Steve Shake Nation, for giveaways and um, some extra discounts here and there. Uncle Steve's Shake, Shake Some on Everything. Literally everything. Also brought to you by Two Guys Smoke Shop and TwoGuysCigars.com. Whether I'm barbecuing or not, I always keep the smoke rolling thanks to my friends at TwoGuysCigars.com. Today I'm smoking the Freud Cigar Company Super Ego. Little bit of strength to it, but I like that. It's a nice smoke. For sure, for sure. Thanks to my friends at TwoGuysCigars.com. I get to smoke some of the best cigars in the world, and so can you. Just visit TwoGuysCigars.com for your perfect barbecue companion. That's the number two, GuysCigars.com. Also brought to you by Backline Fabrication and Backline Smokers. Ryan Newland is building some of the craziest pits on the market today. If you can think it, he can build it. He is an absolute artist when it comes to metal fabrication and the ball busting has started (laughs) yeah he was building my firebox yesterday so it is game time so from if you're looking for a backyard smoker to a 250 gallon all the way up to a thousand gallons and anywhere in between his multi-tool Ryan can build it. He'll have a conversation with you, and you'll get stuff on your custom build that you never even thought you needed, wanted, or anything. He'll just, he will just grabs your personality, and he absolutely runs with it. And I can't wait to see what the hell he's doing on mine. So check them out at Backline Fab, Backline Smokers on all social medias, and Backline Fabrication. Build what you want, not what you need. Also brought to you by Magnus Chef Gloves and Freedom Gloves. Our brother Al Infante knows a little something about fire management. Seeing he's a Miami-Dade firefighter. He has designed these from the ground up and didn't leave one stone under overturned. Made of food grade silicone, patented magnetic clips for an easy on and off. You don't drop them, won't lose them. Heat rated up to 500 degrees. Web fit for firm grip. One size fits all. And dishwasher safe. Mm-hmm. Get a nice easy clean. And then we have 
the big the guns. big guns, the Freedom Gloves, heat rated, heat resistant neoprene, heat rated up to nine hundred and thirty two degrees. If the if the two finger form was new and you're more traditional on the five finger, these Freedom Barbecue Gloves are for you. Extra long, cover the forearms. No more forearm burns, which all of us know, reaching in the back, yep. you get that nice little lines, <laughs> burn lines on, the end, on your forearms by the end of the weekend. So check them out at magnuschef.com. That is M-A-G-N-E-C-H-E-F dot com. Magnuschef, master the fire in freedom gloves. Take a stand. Free your hands. Also brought to you by Custom Cutting Boards R Us dot com. Brother Ian Hemming is building what I refer to as the Yeti of cutting boards. Out right out of our actually guest's hometown today, huh? Magnolia, Texas, made of a hundred percent UV coating protection. Mm -hmm. Non-slip grip, so even on a wet surface, these boards will not slide on you. Um, custom co colors are available, and also the patented deep lip reservoir mm -hmm. to catch all that juicy goodness coming from the perfectly cooked proteins we're all throwing down week in, week out. Check them out at... CustomCuttingBoardsRUs.com. That is the letter R, us, dot, com. Okay, Joe Tucker, what's happening? Matt, what's going on? Uncle Steve, C-Mac, Brother Randy, Big Salinas in the house. Darren Lucas, what's going down? There it is, C-Mac, with his 7,000 degrees. Mm-hmm. And Gray Rhino, what's happening, brother? So let's get to it. I'm excited Ooh, to talk yeah. to my good friend and brother. Guys, you've, if you don't know him, you're going to get to know him. But for everybody who already does, from you, you know him from Chicken Fried Barbecue, originally on YouTube, then the competition circuit, which has been torn up. But now I've got a lot of messages asking me, is this the guy from the Barbecue USA show? I go, well, yes, it is. So tune in. We'll see what happens. So, guys, without further ado, please welcome my brother from Chicken Fried Barbecue, Mr. Bill Purvis. What's up, brother? Uh, it's all good, Johnny Mags. All good, man. <laughs> good to be here, buddy. Oh, thank you, brother, for taking time. Thank you for taking time. First and foremost, please wish a happy birthday to the young Miss Erica, celebrating yeah, her um, 21st birthday today, brother. Wow. That's it, man. The babies grow up fast, man. They grow like weeds. You blink their eye, man. They're 21, so it Ooh. don't take long. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm learning that. I got, I got 13 and 12 right off the bat here, and... It's like, how the hell did you guys get there? Yeah, it's quick, man. It's quick. I, yeah. went, to, I went to work one morning. They were in diapers. <laughs> Pretty soon they're going to be asking for the keys. Yeah, you got that right. <laughs> got that right. Nice. And how is Ms. Vanessa? Uh, she's wonderful. Awesome. Yeah, the wife's doing great. She's doing great. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, man, without uh, – there ain't no bones about it. You're a busy boy. <laughs> man, man I, I keep telling my wife I'm super busy, but she she's not buying it, you know. So she's she's always wanting to fit a little more in my schedule, you know. So a little extra here and there doesn't hurt, doesn't yeah. hurt. But like I said, most everyone knows you, but for the new listeners in there and out in podcast land, who is Bill Purvis and how did chicken fried barbecue begin? Yeah, so uh, I was working in the oil field. I'm down here. You know, I, I live in Magnolia, which is right outside of Houston. Uh, and Houston, big port city, big oil field. Uh, uh, we would, uh, the company I worked for, we would sponsor uh, the Houston Rodeo. Uh, 
livestock show and rodeo. So I mean, it was a big, it's a big social event. I mean, there's a couple hundred thousand people that go down to the, to the barbecue cook off at the uh, Houston rodeo. And, and we were sponsor intent. So uh, our, our company would, you know, invite all our clients down and, and I got to, to meet a lot of the barbecue guys being down there. And, and the guy that we sponsored ended up kept, you know, begging me to come cook with him, you know, and, and one thing led to another, man, I started cooking with him and, and I did three or four contests with him and I thought, man, I can do this. I mean, I've been cooking my whole life. I always cooked for the office and, you know, I've always cooked, but uh, from a competition level, uh, after I saw him do it two or three times, I thought, man, I'm going to go ahead and pay the entry and put my team name in there and let's see what we can do. And uh, man, I think one of my first contests, uh, I hit a first place rib and we hit reserve grand champion. And I thought, man, man this is easy, you know, <laughs> so uh but after that first place rib, it was kind of an unsanctioned contest. You know, I went a couple of months uh, kind of falling flat on my face trying to figure out. So, uh, you know, it, it got it set the hook. But uh, shortly after that, I had to do a little bit of uh, I had to do a little bit more research to figure out what the hell is going on, because uh, it, uh, competitions got pretty tough here in Texas. So. Yeah. Now, now you now you started in what was it? IBCA? Yeah, IBCA is where I first started. Uh, I mean, there's a there's a lot of little fundraiser cookoffs that are unsanctioned, and that was one that I did. It was a fundraiser for the Houston Rodeo. Uh, it was a Go Metro cookoff, and they've got their own little series. This Go Metro cookoffs that are that run around that surround the Houston area. There's about eight of them that happen, and you get points, and you know whoever earns the most points at the end of that little season gets a spot at Houston Rodeo. Uh, oh, cool. So it, there's some guys that run that little, it's not well publicized, but uh, there's no payouts. There's no cash. It's all, it's all money for the rodeo. And I think it's like maybe the top five teams uh, get a spot to cook a uh, Houston rodeo. So uh, I've never really ran that circuit. I won my first event, but I quickly moved on to more sanctioned cook-offs where there's actual prize money. Yeah. So yep. you can actually go and, and, and actually leave with more money than what you started if you had a good day. Oh, so. for sure. And we all, we all know that the, uh, the competition world is getting, and has been for a bit now, quite expensive week in, oh, week yeah. out. You know, between your protein, your entrance fees first off, then yeah. all the proteins you're cooking, never mind travel, lodging, all that, the price of gas now, it, it, it's quite the endeavor. And, you know, it, it, hits the, it hits the wallet a little hard. So as long as you get a couple nice calls, it's all good. And you make a little bit of your money back, for sure. Yeah. So it, it helps out, for sure. Nice. Nice, nice. Let's Ben Ross, what's happening? Tim Rogers. So you were doing those events. <clears throat> Then you made the jump to KCBS. Yeah, I did. I, uh, you know, COVID kind of shut a lot of things down here in Texas as far as our events, and KCBS was still having events. So a bunch of us just kind of took to the road. And uh, at that time, you know, diesel wasn't through the roof like it is now. Uh, so we could go and I could drive up to Oklahoma and, and do an event. And I, I did my first one there, and I think I finished like sixth place overall out of. And I think there was 55 teams, something like that. And I got a first place rib, a seven place chicken. And I thought, man, I really like this. And it's fast. KCBS yeah. turn ins are a lot faster than uh, uh, IBCA, which is what I'd been cooking before there, hour and a half between each meat. And KCBS is 30 minutes. Plus, they, they do pork. So it was uh, a lot more of a challenge. And I'd already finished in the state my first year running IBCA. And I finished third place uh, in points in the state. So I really didn't have an inclination to try to go back and finish number one just because and I already knew everybody in Texas. I wanted to I wanted to expand my horizons and, and meet some other cooks around the country and see how how my barbecue stacked up against, you know, some of the guys in the KCBS circuit. So nice. And yeah, that 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 is a quite a jump from, you know, an hour and a half between each turn in. And with those, you know, you're cooking three proteins when KCBS, you're cooking four proteins and you only have 30 minutes in between turn-ins. So you need to get your, uh, your timing and timeline down to an absolute science. 
And that's what, you know, a lot of the guys have done it. And, you know, it's, it's amazing to watch. And we'll get into it in a little while, but a lot of people now who ne- who've never cooked in a competition or never, you know, attended one and see what's going on, you know, they see it through, you know, the Barbecue Pitmasters, which is completely different from uh, Barbecue USA. That they, I think they did a great job with this, showing the different guys what they were doing, a real good behind the scenes thing more of instead of the structured stuff from before but <clears throat> back to the you jumping bruce leach what's happening brother back to you jumping to kcbs you know like you were saying you got to meet a lot more people and you know build the relationships friendships and you know little tips and tricks throughout here but um, will you always stay now with KCBS? Because one, seriously, one, and, and guys and girls listening, this is no joke when I say this. When Bill started competing until today, he, how long has it been? Three? I guess it's been maybe three years. Three years? Yeah. Yeah, yeah three years. Yeah. Th- th- this is no joke what's about to come out of my mouth. He has absolutely tore it up. It's, it seems every, every Sunday afternoon, Sunday night, I'm flipping through social media, and he's gotten at least a call or, or, or a nice top 10 finish or nice finish in general, which, you know, just proves that you've got it dialed in, you know what you're doing, and the hat's off to you. But also, even if you do have an off day, there is still a post congratulating first and foremost your friends, secondly your competitors. You know, yeah. Yeah, bar- barbecue. It's a community, man. We all know each other, and you know, it's uh, you know when we don't win, we want our friends to win. You know, everybody. Uh, you know, we all help each other out. It's a close knit community, uh, and there's lots of. Uh, You know, there's lots of guys. We all, a lot of us share recipes and, you know, it's kind of a give and take if I'm struggling on chicken and, you know, a guy helps me on chicken and if he's struggling on ribs, I'm prone to help him on ribs. And, you know, it's, it is kind of a give and take in that sense that, you know, there are some people, man, they don't, they don't want to share anything and that's cool, you know, Yeah. but those are the people that I'm going to try to help either. You know, it's, it's kind of a, like I said, there's a, you know, you get into a community, you get into a bunch of friends and, and again, you know, we, we want to see each other do well. And we know that, and there's no one out there that can win every one of them. It just, it's just not possible. Oh, yeah. Uh, the best in the game, they can't win. Uh, you just can't win it every time. So uh, so when you don't win, you want your friends to win. You know? Oh, for sure, for sure. And, and it was great last year watching the, uh, the awards at the American Royal. They had that broadcasted yeah. live. And... When whoever was MC in the event was, you know, all the all the Kansas Missouri people, you know, all the you know Southeast Coast. Ah. Whenever they said, "How about a shout out to all the Texas teams," and you just heard the roar that it was just wild that the there were so many of the of the Texas teams out there competing and you know invitational earned spots and the open but texas was there representing for sure oh i think this year it's even gonna be bigger yeah i mean this year it's gonna be there's so many more teams from texas coming this year that went you know every year i think the the texas delegation that goes to the royal is bigger and bigger um so this year i think uh yeah i think it's gonna be it's gonna be quite a lot from Texas, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be good, and 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 of course, all, like always, my timing is absolutely impeccable. That <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna be in Austin that weekend of the Royal, picking up oh, my you? picking up my pit from, right. from backline. I'm like, oh, of course, <laughs> you know. But hey, I'm getting my own custom pit. Yeah. 
<clears throat> excuse me, I'll sacrifice it. I'll I'll get over it a little little quicker this year. Right. <laughs> then shoot for next year. <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah, uh, Robert, what's up? Jerry Taylor, what's going on, brother? So I guess hmm. Oh, big Rome, what's happening? All right, let, 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 let's get into it of Barbecue USA. Um, how was your experience with it? You know, you seem to be having fun with it. All the people had seemed to have fun with it. And like I had said earlier, it seemed like a very different setup. It was almost documentary style, live documentary style, rather than the somewhat scripted and edited version of barbecue pitmasters yeah i mean it was uh my experience was great man i i mean i had i had a great time and i felt really uh i felt really honored that that my team had gotten picked you know uh there was a lot of applications casting directors casting t- man there was a couple of different companies that you had to filter through there was a casting company that you had to answer all these questions give them all your stats send pictures of you know your trophies so there was a lot of you know, a little loop. It was kind of just to get on the show. There was quite a bit of uh, of Zoom calls, and a lot of them would, you know, two or three Zoom calls, and a lot of them were asking the same questions that the last Zoom call asked. Mm-hmm. You know, so because uh, they had a casting company and then they had a production company, and each one of them, uh, you know, were asking kind of the same thing. And uh, and then even when you got there, some of the you know they filmed a lot of footage, and, and they didn't obviously they didn't show everything that they filmed. Uh, you know, they even told us that and we're probably going to film about 200 hours worth of footage and we're going to have to trim it down to uh, to 42 or 43 minutes. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I felt really, man, I felt really honored to be picked. And, uh, uh, you know, I know most of the guys, you know, that were a lot of the guys that were here at the Texas one that had applied and, you know, filled out the information, went through all the Zoom calls and didn't get picked, you know. and Oh, yeah. Man, I think the whole community, if you were, if you're a competition cook and you were going to that contest, you, you wanted to be one of the guys that got picked because uh, you would end up on TV. And how cool would that be? So, oh, uh, absolutely. Was super special, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. And and that was a lot like, um, oh, um, what what is it on Netflix? The Great American ba- Barbecue Showdown, that show they is had it- last year. I didn't even see it. No. Oh, it was it was, it was it was it was great. It was great. Uh, Melissa Cookston was one of the judges. Okay. You know, they had four okay. people, yeah. and uh, you know, it, it was really interesting. And I think they, I know they did a season two. I know for a fact they did a season two, and because a lot of the boys had tried out right. for it. I know. I know Greg um, put in for it. Chef Johnny. Right. From Texas style barbecue and cuisine, he was in the running. Uh, Eric from Camp House Barbecue, and you know there was a bunch of them, and that's what they were saying. It was co- uh, constant meetings, meetings, send pictures. Uh, they had live meetings, and you had to do a cook. So you had your protein already on. Then you had you had to do like a like a side live with them on. So you know just to catch your camera presence and. And and all, you know, all I think that. I did have I did have one of those people call me about that show. I think I'm not sure it was a because I remember talking to Chef about it. But uh, man, I told them that I turned it down. I don't know that they would have picked me. Yeah. But I told the lady, I, said, I do competition barbecue. I'm not a chef. You know, I'm not going to be able. You know, if the show is anything chefy, where you know they're going to say, hey, here's a box with, you know, meat and all these dry ingredients and you need to stir something up. That's not me. Yeah. All I really do is if it's about competition barbecue, man, you can call me, but then don't call me if it's about like watching barbecue brawl, man, that's, that's yeah. not me. Yeah. You know, I, I could, that's not, that's not my wheelhouse uh, for them to show up with, you know, all these different little cuts of meats and uh, you've got some kind of pantry to run to, you know, yeah. That, that's how and this was not, set up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's not necessarily my wheelhouse yeah. as far as uh, uh, man. I, I, I'm I've been doing competition barbecue. I don't do uh, <laughs> you know. I don't think I would do very well. I think a chef does very well in that environment. You know. Oh yeah, uh, you know because you, you're thinking you you know thinking quick and you know having that 
chef background of of a whole meal and yeah, this I mean, ingredient. They're, they're giving them chicken wings and say, hey, have these guys done in 20 minutes, you know? So they're having to deep fry chicken wings. You know, I'm not, and I don't have a deep fryer at the house, you yeah. know? I probably should have one, you know? <laughs> I would like to have one, but uh, man, it takes me a little longer than 20 minutes to do chicken wings, you know? Yep, yep. Hey, Juke Moreno, what's up, brother? Oh, there's Mrs. Mags. She's a little late. I wonder if Kent had texted her saying she was late. But anyway, but yeah, because I think, I think that show is coming out, uh, I believe, this fall. Because normally okay. in the summer, but it got, it got backed off. And uh, I actually I, I have to send a message to somebody who was on there and get that all set up. You know, okay, uh, Chapin, Chapin has a question for you, Bill. Where is the furthest you have traveled to compete from home? Any areas of country that were tougher judging-wise? I think the furthest I went was Myrtle Beach. And we spent a week out there kind of hitting some competitions. You know, I hit Atlanta first, and then we moved to uh, – we decided to spend a week in Myrtle Beach just kind of for a vacation. And there happened to be a competition the next weekend, so we hung out on the uh, <laughs> we hung out on the eastern seaboard there for a little bit, and uh, uh, and, and cooked uh, right there on the water at this Myrtle Beach at one of their uh, one of their RV parks. They had a big RV park there with the and it probably had forty, I think forty or forty five teams, but that was probably the furthest from home was Myrtle Beach. And uh, you know, as far as toughest man, it's tough right here in Texas. To me, the toughest area for me to cook is right here in my backyard. Uh, uh, there's uh, there's no shortage of good cooks here in Texas. So, yeah. oh, Kent, Mrs. Mags has an excuse to be late. Oh my God, <laughs> unbelievable! Oh, Ryan Newland, what's up, brother? Welcome in. We we're just talking about you a little earlier. Um, but yeah, it's like I said, you've been absolutely crushing it, brother. And you know, it's it's led to a few other things because I, if I'm not mistaken, you've actually dipped your toe in, and I want to say it was with with Phil Breeden from LC Barbecue of a, a cooking class. Yep, yeah, we just had that last weekend, and uh, you know, I've did another one last year with Fred. This year, me and me and uh, LC did one, but. Uh, you know, it's pretty prevalent here in Texas. A lot of cooking classes, uh, you know, get more people in the sport. Uh, I've thought about doing them out of state. You know, there's been, you know, I've got people in Mississippi that want me to come there and do a class. Colorado wants me to come do a class. So, um, and at the same time, too, I also get private classes where people want, you know, they want to shadow me to cook off. So I'll do those too. I've probably done a handful of those where, you know, they actually want to go to a cook-off and follow it uh, with a one-on-one. We call them shadow classes. So they just kind of shadow you as you uh, as you go about your business and they get to watch the whole process and take notes. And and that's that's what I did to improve myself. You know, I took, I've, I've taken several classes and, you know, once a year, I, I want to continue to take classes from other pit masters just because, man, it's kind of like, you know, Tiger Woods, man. I mean, not that I'm Tiger Woods or anything, but you know, all these guys, even if they're good, they got coaches. Yeah. Everybody needs help. Everybody, you can learn something from, from everybody. So, uh, uh, and there are some guys out there that have never taken a class and they've done good, but uh, classes have definitely been a big part of my success for sure. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I, I haven't taken a class yet, but I, I de- I'm definitely going to, uh, definitely going to definitely want to, um, and uh, around here, it would, it's going to, be um, my friend Billy Gillespie. I don't know if yeah. you've ever actually had the chance of meeting him at any, have, any of the yeah, events. I met him at the Jack Daniels last year. Super nice guy. Yeah. yeah. You know, he has, he's a, he's a South Shore, Massachusetts guy. And yep. so, he, you know, he's close. And, you know, we've had, he's been on the show two or three times. Really great guys. You know, Greg and the boys at NEP, you know, they got to officially, well, Greg met him obviously here on the show, but the other boys, Met them at a couple of comps. They've been starting to doing last. They started doing the competitions last year in the area, right. and you know, and, and they all said the same thing. He goes, everyone's so helpful. You know, yeah. you know, Bill and invite um, invited, introduced them to you know 
the crew, I guess, the, you know, the weekend, yeah. every weekend guys. And uh, it was great. But, yeah, he, he, he has some private classes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get in touch with him. And actually, I'm going to get in touch with him because uh, he got in on the jack. Yep. Um, yep. yep. Again, this year. Um, and it, I guess it was a very uh, weird one of this was either his, I want to say it would have been his 11th in a row. Right. So after right. 10, he didn't get drawn, but I guess after 10, you get an automatic. See, and I thought it was maybe after seven, like, you know, because their number is seven. Yeah. I thought maybe after, you know, maybe after Bill got, you know, after he'd been there seven times that, you know, every year after that he was an automatic, you know, that's what I thought it was seven, but I did see his post where yeah. and he, he had been 10 times. So uh, uh, he's got an automatic in, so, which I think is great. So. Um, yeah. Oh, well, for sure. For sure. Yeah. He's, he's, he's a great yeah, guy. And he knows what he's doing. He'd be a great class to take, you know, someone like that, man, he's been around a long time. He's, he's won pretty much, I think most everything you can win, yeah. you know, uh, uh, he's probably forgotten more barbecue stuff than most people know. You know oh, for so. sure. For sure. For sure. You know, so, you know, with, with, with going back to last weekend with you and Phil, you know, how much work was it to get that up and going and, you know, what was involved to, to get the, get the class with you guys? Now, did you guys work together or did you each take a, take two proteins? We, we, each, we each did different meets, you know, uh, we each did different meets, but I mean, you get people messaging you, you know, quite regularly. If you go out and you're winning contests and you're doing good, Man, you get people messing you going, hey, man, when are you going to do a class? When are you going to do a class? So, yeah, man, I'll keep your name and your number and I'll let you know once. So all of a sudden you build up, you know, 15 or 20 people that are interested and, you know, you post a flyer, pick a date, post a flyer and decide on who's going to do what meets and kind of round those guys up that if they were, you know, hey, they they wanted us, you know, hey, you're going to the Royal, man, I'd really like to do a KCBS class. Okay, I'll keep your name. I'll keep your name. And like I said, you shoot them out there and uh, before you know it, you, you get 15, you know, 20 people signed up and uh, and you go in there and you, you teach them everything that, you know, like I said, I did chicken thighs. He did chicken legs. I did ribs. He did pork. And then I did the brisket flat and he did burn in. So we kind of gave them, you know, everything they needed and they can pick and choose, you know, uh, on the chicken if they want to do thighs. And they got a good solid recipe with mine on thighs and a process. Uh, I was cooking on drums. He was cooking on an offset. So depending on what kind of smoker you had, eh, that processes don't always translate. You know, uh, I'm cooking thighs on a drum. That same procedure probably won't work on an offset. Yeah. Because the heat's a little different. So, uh, so you kind of have to, you know, that's one thing I would tell people if they were going to take a class. Man, I would take a class that someone has, they're cooking on a similar smoker than yours. You know, if you're cooking on an offset, man, take a class where a guy that's teaching on an offset. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to a drum class. Not to say you can't learn things from different ones, but, you know, if you're first getting into it, you know, it, it helps to keep the smoker the same. Oh, sure, sure. And you actually gave me a little low-hanging fruit, and I have, to t I have to take my shot. You were talking about, you know, a shadow class. Is that how you got stuck with? Daddy Dutch at the Royal last year? No, no. So. <laughs> Daddy Dutch wanted to clean my dishes, you know, so I did not charge Daddy Dutch to clean my dishes. And, you know, I mean, Kent's real respectful. He's been in the competition yeah. game, so he wasn't in there trying to figure out my, my recipes or any of that. He was just there to help and experience it all. Yeah, you know, and He got to see some of it, but I'm pretty sure – you know, even if he was in there the whole time, there's things are moving so fast, fast at a competition. And if you're not writing it down, it's hard to remember all the little, I mean, I'm sure, you know, he picked up a few little tips here and there, but uh, man, he didn't, there's no way he could have walked. Man, half the time I can't walk away and know what I did. I have to write it down <laughs> if I've changed something. Cause then I'll have yeah. a hard time. Well, what did I do with that con? Did mm -hmm. I use two tablespoons or one tablespoon, you know? Yeah. Okay. That, that's that's a great point right there. Now, do you keep logs of each cook off? You know, area wise, uh, weather wise, you know, all that stuff. 
No, I'm not really. Uh, I do keep a log, but it's a very simple. It's a very simple log for for each cook off, and it's really more of a timeline of when I put everything on and when I wrapped everything. Okay. So I uh, and, and I sometimes I record when meat's finished, but most of the time it's just a simple timeline, and it's mainly I use it mainly when I'm cooking because I man sometimes I'll put brisket on at six, sometimes I'll put it on at six thirty. Sometimes I'll put it on at 615. I like my sleep, mm -hmm. so I don't necessarily wake up exactly. I'm more of a, a an evening person, not a morning person. So man, sometimes I wake up a little late and I've got to kind of, you know, my schedule gets a little bit fuzzy. And uh, so I write it down that way. I know and my brisket's been on for two hours. I need to start looking at it or ribs have been on for an hour. Let me start looking at those guys. That way I'm not questioning myself throughout the cook. Man, did I put ribs on at eight or eight 30? You know? Mm -hmm. So I do, I do make notes throughout the cook of everything that I'm doing. That way it's easy for me to juggle the four meats and know where every meat is at. <laughs> there it is. I learned a lot from Bill while doing dishes. <laughs> uh, Junior, what's up, brother? Um, well, speaking of the drums, you know, obviously, we all got to see um, see your setup of your trailer, which is absolutely beautiful. You know, right. I just I just love that everything's black. You know, <laughs> it's it's just that bad, mean look to it, which is fantastic. But um, what kind of drums are you smoking on now? So they're race crew drums. So it's a guy here in Houston that builds them race crew barbecue. He's one of the guys that got me into cooking. And, uh, you know, he builds drums. And, and there's quite a few Texas teams and even outside Texas that are using his drums. So, uh, but, yeah, I've got four four race crew uh, race crew barbecue drums. And, man, I love them. They, they cook great. Um, and they're, they're real easy to maintain the temperatures. So yeah. they don't get too crazy hot. They usually like to sit right around 300, which works well for me for all my proteins. So Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool, yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, now, you know, obviously, like, I, lo I love the barbecue shows because, because I like to I'll, – I'll watch you on the screen, but I'm actually looking past you. Right. I'm looking around. <laughs> on what you got on the shelves and, and all this. And I'm taking notes. And, and that was for everybody, you know, like when yeah. um, with, with, with Richard Fergola from Fergalicious, you know, uh -huh. um, uh, Sonny, yeah. Sonny Moody, you know, mm -hmm. right there, they had the whole shelf, you know, so I'm making little notes of what everyone's using. I'm like, okay, I actually have that. And, it, you know, I like to deep dive, you know, geeky like that. And, uh, you know, and, you know, thank you for dropping that little tidbit on duck fat. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, you know there, there, is, there is another tip you gave out. Oh, this was a few months ago. And I, I believe you on um, Barbecue Champs Academy about a little something you put into uh, some chicken thighs to, cha to add a little something that the judges weren't expecting. And I can't Man. wait to try that one out. <laughs> but my lips are sealed. You guys can go back, look at these episodes. They're right there on Facebook and figure this right. stuff out on your own. I am sworn <laughs> to secrecy. Uh, but, but, but yeah, man, it was, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. So the race day drums just run great for you. Oh, now, yeah, man, have you been running man. drums from the get-go, or did you start like an offset on the back of the porch? or uh, From the very beginning, it's always been drums. My first competition was a drum, and man, that's all I've run. Um, they're light, you know. They fit in the back of the trailer. They're not real heavy, so if I'm taking it to Mississippi or Arkansas or Georgia, and I don't, I'm not hauling a big old offset on the back. All right, all right. Uncle Steve is asking, w when are you going to start selling two and three, two to three tickets to be? your assistant in the cook-off. <laughs> <laughs> and they're always for sale. It's just really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a price. There's but, a price for everything. But with going into that, by the looks of some of your posts, your Texas rib grind is doing very well for you. Oh, yeah, man. I, I mean, it's, um, I couldn't be, I couldn't be more pleased. You know, it's, uh, 
Man, it's in probably 20, 20 or 30 different stores around the country and, and Texas. It sells the best in Texas. Uh, mm-hmm. There's lots of guys using it, lots of guys posting their results. You know, it's it's always great to see. You know, and, uh, most competition cooks are pretty secretive, but, you know, occasionally, you know, some of the guys want to help people out and this, that, and the other. You know, guy last week hit a first-place rib and tagged tagged Texas rib grind in his rib. So there's there's quite a few of them because you still have to cook it. You oh, know, yeah. It's, uh, uh, there's no guarantee. You can't just sprinkle Texas rib grind on it. You're going to get first place. It don't work like that. Yeah. You still have to turn in a, you know, tender rib. I mean, tenderness is the key to competition barbecue. It's, uh, you know, I think uh, Travis Clark says he could beat people with salt, pepper, and ketchup because he's going to get them on tenderness, you know? Yeah. So yep. uh, it is a tenderness game. But at the same time, too, man, my rib grind, it, it gives it a unique look. Everybody can usually spot it, you yeah. know? Uh, you can spot it on my KCBS turn-ins. You can spot it on uh, my IBCA or CBA turn-ins. You can see the pepper flakes popping. So, oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's been great. Yeah, it is absolutely delicious. We we had some some uh, good friends of ours come up and spend a weekend with their daughter in uh, where where we lived before we were neighbors. So when yeah. we moved, we hadn't seen them in forever, and you know everything that's been going on. Uh, so the, they finally were able to come up this weekend, and Claudia had go, found some beautiful pork chops. So we're sitting there. I got home from work. I'm getting ready, and I'm like, what am I doing? I'm doing, and I'm like, oh, right for the rib grind. <laughs> and, oh, man, the, you know, I think it might have been the first time Claudia had tried them, and definitely the first time that, uh, that our friends had, and they absolutely loved them. It is. Right. It is such a, um, like you said, it's a, it has a distinctive look to it, but it's the flavor profile on it covers all the aspects, from you know sweet, heat, bold. It's an extremely savory seasoning, but perfectly balanced, so it's not overpowering. Yeah, you know, you you did a fantastic job in getting it, and you know, I I, I recommend it, guys. Go check it out. You get your hands on some. Get your hands on some. We'll give, we'll figure out in just a minute where you can find it. Obviously, if you're not in the areas of where everybody sells it. So, are you in any of the? You know, I I see the different stores, but like I know around he, us, you know, Ace Hardware car you know carries. Uh, you know, Blues Hog, Meat Church, Cosmo, Luton Booty. You know, are you in, getting into the hardware store type yeah, things? I mean, or? I've gotten into, I'm in the local Aces here in my area, uh, mainly because people in the Houston area have gone and kind of knocked on Aces door and asked them to carry it. You know, they have a relationship with their local Ace and they go in and you know, barbecue guys are in there every week buying stuff. Hey, man, can you pick this one up? I really want to, you know, I really want this one. So I've had several Ace Hardwares reach out to me. And, you know, they're allowed to, they're independents, a lot of them. So they're allowed to to go outside of the Ace Warehouse, if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I have, I think, three Ace Hardwares here in Houston that are carrying it. But, uh, but I'm working on a deal with Old World Spice, which has a contract with ace corporate which would be able to put me in most all their stores oh, so perfect yeah that, that's that's in the pipe so hopefully uh you know it but it well you know dealing with these corporate contracts it's going to take a while yeah. but uh, i do have a company that that wants to uh you know they've seen some of my success in the competition they see some of my social media they want to get behind it and and help and, and at the same time for them sell more rubs you know so oh for sure for sure you know that that that's awesome, but like like I said, it's it's an incredible rub. Now that's the only one you had. You got anything else in the works in the laboratory? I'm working on yeah, I'm working on a salt and pepper rub, just a salt and pepper blend, and uh, you know for the true you know Texan that just wants salt and pepper. So I'm working on that. I'm working on a, a chicken rub as well, but I'm I'm dealing with their food scientists to to match the profile to make sure you know when you stick your name on something. You want to make sure it's right and oh, yeah. make sure that, that you love it because, man, not everybody's going to love everything. You know, some people like Pepsi, some people like Coke. And, uh, 
main thing is I need to make sure that I really like it before I, before I release it. So oh, uh, I'm working on a couple of different, like I said, they, they send me samples and uh, um, I run it here at the house in between competitions to see, you know, is this the blend that I like? If I need more pepper, or if I need more salt, I work with their food scientists to develop, uh, but we're getting close on a couple, which will be cool. So. Okay. Awesome. 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 Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Big rooms, you know, layers of flavor and, and that, you know, that that's absolutely it. There's so many, so many different, um, different profiles you can catch even, even from bite to bite. It, it you know, yeah. it's amazing, but, but yeah, though, man, who I think I still have one pork chop left. I hid <laughs> so I'll have I'll have that in about an hour and a half from now. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> once I once I get in the house, get away from Mrs. Mag, get away from the fridge. You're not going to find it. You know she's she's looking. I'll guarantee. I'll guarantee. But brother, awesome man. Thank you so much for taking time. It was great catching up with you. It was great seeing you on the big screen. Yeah, no, I had you know, fun, man. It was a blast. You know, it looked like you looked like you had a blast, and it looked like Miss Vanessa had a blast too. She was all yeah. smiles the whole time, you know. She was. Yeah. So that that was great. That was great. Um, but yeah, brother. So where can, actually rib grind? Where can everybody, if it, people would like to order it, where can they order it from? So there's there's quite a fit quite a few barbecue stores that they can order from if they're other ordering other supplies like Big Papa Smokers he carries it online KC Grilling Company carries it barbecue superstore carries it I carry it on my website uh, which is chickenfriedbbq.com so you can go to my website and order it direct there for me but also if you're if you're placing orders on on the internet through some of the different, you know, barbecue, like I said, a lot of the comp cooks, a lot of them order from barbecue superstore or KC grilling company or big Papa smokers. It's at most of the ones that are kind of outlined for competition cooks. Uh, but again, you can order it from my website and eh, it's on my Instagram. If you can't remember the website, if you go to my Instagram, it's in the profile there. So it's, it's usually plastered on most of my social media, which is they're all listed under chicken fried BBQ whether Perfect. it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, any of them. So Perfect, brother. Perfect, yeah. brother, man. Like I said, thank you so much. You know, give my love to the family. Um, and, yeah, man, I appreciate you and appreciate your friendship, brother. No, thanks, Johnny, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, hang on one bit. We'll do it again. We'll do it, we'll do it again soon. Oh, you know it. Hang on one second. We'll be right, but jump right back in with you. Awesome. He is just a gentleman. Yeah. Down to earth. Humble. Very humble yeah. on, you know, the success he has. Like I said, I'm not joking. You yeah. know, every weekend, him and, it's him and Phil Breeden, LC Barbecue, you know, always a call, a finish, you know, you know, a bunch of the boys also. I don't want to leave anybody out, but there's so many Texas boys. Yeah. I need another hour to name everybody. <laughs> but, you know, like I said, guys, I, I highly recommend Bill's Texas Rib Grind. Unbelievable on pork. Um, actually, on steak, too. We had a couple steaks, and it was tremendous on that, too. So it's, it's extremely versatile, yeah. too, if you want to experiment. But check that out. All social medias, Chicken Fried Barbecue. Awesome, awesome. Well, that's it, Chrissy. Let's wrap up. this up. Next week is oh, going to yeah. be fun. Oh, yeah? It's always fun. Next week, from Your Behind Barbecue, check it out on TikTok. He is hilarious. Kyle oh. Matyshevsky out of Arizona, good friend with, from, with Smitty. Awesome. And he is going to be coming in, talking all types of smack. That's all we like. Talking turnip soup cartel. For those who know, know. And if you don't, tune in. You'll find out real quick. And it's a hell of a story. I need to know. Yes. Well, tune in next week when Kyle joins us. But that's it for this week, folks. I'd like to thank you all for joining. Catch the audio wherever podcasts are found. Catch the video on Facebook, YouTube. On YouTube, hit that subscribe button and notification bell have all the episodes from episode one right there at your fingertips on social media find 
all the links down below. Questions and comments, please send them to pitlifebbqpodcast at gmail.com. And like always, subscribe, like, rate, and review. Hit that share button. It just pu- puts little magic, helps all these platforms get it out to, to more ears and keep on building here. And I'll be admissed that I missed it last week, but everybody, I'd love, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for your support. Last week was the fourth anniversary of the Pit Life Barbecue Podcast. August 8th, 2018 was episode one. Yeah. And last week was August 9th. Yeah. So four years strong, still going. And I got a list of guests that this ain't slowing down anytime soon. So thank mm-hmm. you, each and every one of you, for your support week in, week out, whether listening, watching, however. Thank you all. I love yous. I appreciate yous. And until next week, keep the smoke rolling. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.